Okay, so uh, the next two chunks of 40 minutes we're going to mostly be writing. Um, but I just wanna say the, the sort of framework of what we're doing here. So um, I have this anatomy of a Shurker OGS program of study, um, which is very common. This is sort of how, the, how these things get laid out. Um, so the ingredients that you have to have in that very short statement are a title, the um, context objectives of what you're doing and the research question, what methodology you'll be using to look into that question, what sets you up to be a good person to do this, so your academic background and the current context that you're involved in, when you'll be doing this, so the timeline for your work, uh, and then a short sentence that just sums up why you are the greatest person to do this super interesting project. So um, your statement will roughly go in this order. And this is what the readers will expect to see, and that's why you're doing it in this order. Because you want to give a statement that provides um, the least friction to your readers and gives them the most points of attachment to have a positive projection of what they think you're gonna do. Um, so it's not that you're writing something that is bland and safe, it's that you're writing something that um, isn't calling up lots of questions uh, that would make them hesitate about thinking that your project is good and that you're fundable. So today we're going to approach writing these sections not in the order that you'll ultimately put them in. Now, um, this is a thing that I think is really useful and interesting to do in general as a writer. Um, it's a practice that I learned partially through a really great um, book called Nonfiction Book Proposals Anyone Can Write, which I recommend actually as a, a way to start writing your um, proposals when you write them. It's Nonfiction Book Proposals Anyone Can Write, Elizabeth Lyon. The public library has it. Um, and it's partially, it won't apply to everything that you do at, at, um, for the dissertation or thesis, but partially one of the things that Lyon does is help cue you about how to get traction on the work. So I've modeled what we're doing today in part on that. Um, how do we get traction to start writing about things? So, so these will be the, the title, context objectives and research question, methodology, your academic background and present context, the project timeline, and your summing up statement of your contributions. That'll be the ultimate order, but we're gonna start um, in different places. So um, what I'd like to start with actually is the academic background and current context section. And the way that we're gonna be doing this writing is basically free writing. So we're doing a thing right now which is slightly audacious. Um, it's a technique that I've used often in working with academic writers, which is to generate a lot of text pretty quickly without doing editing on the text. And just in brief, the view here is that you can have an attitude of incredible abundance about your writing um, that you can experience through seeing how much you can write when you just are writing and letting the creative part of yourself put things on the paper without um, bringing the editor into the equation. So all of you know, as writers who have already done a lot of writing, that there's a part of you that creates, that puts things out, that has leaps, that tries things. And there's a part of you that asks, does that make sense? Is that a stupid thing to say? Um, is that a clear sentence? Is that sentence too long? So these are incredibly necessary, valuable pieces of our being as writers um, of creative academic work, which all of us are. The thing that is um, bad and difficult and that catches people even more on grant applications is when the editor, who is judgy and self-doubty and um, strict and kind of stern, uh, gets in the way of the part of you that's just writing about some stuff that you're excited to talk about. So free writing is a technique that allows us to disaggregate the editor, to just internally say, um, you are so awesome, I really love your thoughts, 
just sit over there and I'll call you back in when it's time for you to come work on this for me. Um, and the specific way that we do free writing is to um, type or write without stopping. Um, some people do free writing without any topic at all. And this is a thing that I recommend to you in your general practice as a writer, to give yourself some warm up time where you just write for a certain amount of time without stopping, without having a fixed topic. It's surprisingly um, lubricating. It really can get you um, in a groove for writing and it's a good thing to do. Like in five minutes, you can suddenly have some traction on your work. We're gonna do a, a directed free write, which is having a um, specific question that you're coming back to over and over again. So in this case, what I want everyone to do is open a blank document on your computer, if you're using a computer, or turn to a page where you can write things. Um, and the question that you're answering is, what is your academic background? So, You'll come back over and over again. You're going to write continuously. You'll come back over and over again to saying, if you don't have anything else to say, my academic background is, my academic background is. Um, so we'll do this for three minutes. So this is, you're going to talk about whatever comes to you when I say, what's your academic background? You'll say, my academic background is my academic. And then at the three minute mark, we'll switch and I will say, um, now talk about your current context. So in this part, the thing that you'll write over and over again if you don't have anything else to say is, at Carleton, I will. So this is gonna be stuff like, I will work with this amazing person who's the perfect person to supervise my work. I will have a crew of people that are really great to talk to, my fellow students, I'm supported by this cool database that the library has, whatever. Everyone clear on what we're doing? Okay. So the only rule is you do not go back and edit. You do not read what you just wrote. You um, don't comment. You don't fix your punctuation. So if that's something that you know is gonna be hard for you, I want you to take this piece of paper and put it on your screen. So you'll open a document and not look at it. You'll just type, but make sure you're actually in a document. <laughs> Okay, is everyone clear? Our academic background, like how far do we go back? Like, whatever, whatever comes to you. Okay. Really, whatever comes to you. So if the first thing is like, I have been thinking, I have been thinking about people in prison since I was five, right? If that's what comes to you when I say, what's your academic background? You say it. Okay, everyone ready? So I want to hear nothing but typing, starting now. So if you're pausing to think about something, you're not pausing to think about anything. You're just putting the piece of paper over your computer and you're writing my academic background as my academic background is.
Okay, switching now to at Carlton I will. So over and over again, at Carlton I will, what's your context? Who will you work with? What will you do? So now my supervisor is really great because. So come to a close with that. All right, so now we're gonna generate titles for your uh, thesis. And the way to generate titles is to generate a lot of titles. So this is also like, um, doesn't matter in a certain way, um, and you can have a sense of abundance with it but it's really great to have a title in a whole lot of different ways. So one of the things that happens is when someone says, what are you working on? You say, um, well, the title of my thesis is, and then they're like, oh, you have a title for your thesis. That's very advanced. Um, and you don't say to them, yeah, I came up with it in a random workshop in August, um, but it's good. So having a title is just a way, a placeholder. It's a, it's a anchor. It's a way that you can know that you're doing something. So does anyone yet have a title for their thesis? Kind of, what is it? Um, Seeming man, how long will it take literature? Okay, nice. Okay, so, what, so consuming man, so what's nice about that is that it's both a person who's consuming and someone who's being consumed. It's very good. I like gerunds. Um, so titles almost always have a colon and then a thing that comes after the colon okay so are you going to look you're going to look at literature about cannibalism any particular time frame
so far instead of sweeping from um, Victorian era into contemporary. For an MA thesis? No, for a PhD. For a PhD thesis, okay. So notice what just happened there. I was like, that is too big for an MA thesis. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe too big for a PhD thesis, right? Are you gonna look at any particular area of the world? Um, I think, I think part of my problem is that I'm very interested in very particular texts. Uh -huh. um, it has a universal, like, all male literature from this country. Right. Um, I, I want to sort of look at the um, recent anthropological um, theories of, around cannibalism and how, how certain cannibalism works in respect to society. Mm -hmm. so, Right, and not just fiction, but anthropological literature. Using that more of a method. Using anthropological literature as a methodology to access fiction. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of different options happen here. So you can say consuming man colon um, anthropologies, theories, fictions, enactments of the cannibal. Um, you should be writing everything down that feels like, oh, that's a possible thing. Another option. Consuming man. Um, three texts from, you know, 1856 to 1923, exemplifying the, so you can be in a PhD thesis, you can be very specific about dates. Um, you can also be attentive to like norms of the discipline. So often in literature, you'll cue people like I'm an Americanist or I'm a globalist or, right? So you can be like cueing, consuming man, North American fascinations with cannibalism in fiction and anthropology, um, right? If you want to situate yourself that way. Uh, so, and then you can just try having some different um, before the colon things. Right? So, yeah. Okay, anyone else have a title that they can share with us? Sometimes, which is the best to do to start writing because we generate time to or generate time to start writing? Because I know sometimes when you're writing, you find out that, you know, um, you're, you're, what you're writing about covers much more. And from that, content you can also generate a title yeah so i want you to generate a title before you start writing understanding that you're also going to generate many more titles after you start writing often what happens is people don't come up with a title until they're done with their thesis and then they come up with a bad title so this is just the same as everything else come up with a title now so that you can revise it okay so we're going to do it so you're going to still come up with more titles, so many more titles right now. So the first title that I want you to come up with is I want you to think about your topic and have before the colon, very big general thing. Something that's like the biggest generalist, biggest statement of your topic. And then after the colon, a specific thing that you're going to look at. So big general thing, colon, specific thing. Anyone have a general thing, specific thing? Um, autism and the academic writing at university. Um, 
And then my specific is the voices from autistic undergraduates. Okay, so that is too broad a specific thing. Broad so specific. a study of autistic adults at a medium-sized Canadian university okay. is a specific thing. Uh, youth homelessness, co-creating school-based intervention and prevention tools. Okay, so youth homelessness, great big thing. Co-creating school-based interventions and prevention tools. Okay, still too general. Okay. So a more specific version could be, um, so a st notice that there's some norms yeah. here. A study of um, practices at two Ottawa area high schools. Okay, this is very big, okay? Being Indigenous in the public service of Canada in the era of reconciliation, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, those are also the areas that I'm interested in. That is very big. Yeah, so then a bigger version, a big thing, so you also can think about like, if you're yeah. doing this form of title, um, indigenous public servants, question mark. Mm -hmm. um, working for the federal government, right? Like t interviews with public service workers for the federal, right? Like, mm -hmm. so that you can be like, trick, yeah. trick. Okay, so we're gonna do more. Okay, so next. Think of a song lyric that applies to your um, topic. Take the quote from that song lyric and put it before the colon and then make a really academic sounding version of it. What? What a great idea. <laughs> Sorry, then what do we put after it? Something that feels super academic to you. <laughs> Where you're like, dur, 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 dur. Anyone got one? Hi. Oh, Karen. <laughs> Hi, what's yours? If, they, if there's no one talking in the room. Uh, the one I have right now is Teenagers Scare the Living Shit Out of Me, a comparative study of regulation of risky youth through the implementation of YCJ in Canadian provinces. Nice. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, I got, before you came into my life, I missed you so bad. Resisting white appropriation of indigenous identification through co-creating relational norms of accountability. <laughs> Everyone's like, <gasps> very academic. Anyone else? Was, did anyone not be able to come up with a song lyric? No song lyrics? I was racking my brain for all songs. Um... Yeah, I mean, you can do a bunch of, so thinking about like, yeah, I mean, and it might be that this just doesn't work, right? Like I'm thinking like, take me to the jailhouse. It doesn't speak to me as much. Right, it might not be a thing that comes up. I have a, I have a different title from the- First one? From the first one, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm from fighting police to fighting for pronouns, a contemporary trans rights movement and those trans prisoners. Nice. Now, that title 
you could think about breaking into two because there is this norm where you start with either something that's like playful in general or something that's super academic and then you switch for after for the part of the colon right so so, so that could be flipped or each of those could bro be broken out to be the first part of something that then gets really specific and um, academic right because both of those are actually quite engaging in terms yeah. of um, so this is also you don't have to think about this so much for this the, pur the purpose of having a title for this is just that you have a title for your your application thinking about titles more generally though the ways that the ways that grad student work gets cited is through having a lot of specificity in the title that gets archived at libraries and that gets listed in on the internet um, and it's also a way that you can be laying intellectual claim to the area that you're working on. So actually having titles is something that you begin to track your own place in the world. And, and later it is something that, that gets you connected. And so that people will be like, they'll be like, oh, I'm doing this panel and I can't remember. There was someone I think who was writing about trans prisoners and resistance. Um, and if you've, Put that title out in a couple of places they search for it or it comes up on a library search so titles are political and they're strategic so that's one of the reasons i'm really encouraging you to start having them um do you want to do one more little generating one or do you feel like you've got enough that you can actually just have something to put down i sorry i wanted to ask um is it often that anybody breaks from the convention, I guess not, because that's why it's a convention of the sort of like, you know, something colon something. Like, one thinks that in the history of papers, there have been like one word titles. Or there definitely are one word titles and there are places where people break from convention, absolutely. So, uh, places to do that, so probably you shouldn't actually do that for your thesis. Mm -hmm because you wanna take that real estate to, to capture those things, like people searching you electronically, giving them lots of really specific terms, but not too specific that it, um, so mm -hmm. the places to be playful are often in chapter titles. Right. Um, and when you're doing a paper that is like in a journal that you know people are gonna look at anyway. Um, but, you know, for publications, especially at this career stage right it's not terrible to do the conventions partially because the conventions are part of the tracking there's lots of really interesting data about um titles citation um so that we can't get into too much but it's totally fine if you're going to do something that doesn't have a colon which i support um make it something that's fairly uh direct and dull and explanatory so so if you were going to do one that was like not with a beginning pre colon thing it would just be like title a study of autistic adults access to writing supports at a medium-sized canadian university so it wouldn't be just the playful part it would be telling you want the committee to look and be like what's this about ah i see what it's about and you don't want it to be too um, too playful. Yes. Andy. Sorry to interrupt, but I was just wondering um, if anybody that was you know did the uh, initial title and then picked the second title with the song lyric. I'm just wondering if anybody, when picking a song lyric, kind of had a similar take on their original idea, but wrote it somewhat differently. So um, I'm just wondering because I I kind of got that a little bit with the first lyric I thought of. So what can you will you share what yours was? The second one. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, sort of, uh, yeah, you can tear a building down, but you can't erase a memory. Claiming a memnonic right to the city in Toronto's Davenport West neighborhood, 1885 to the present. Nice. Okay. And how did that change from your first title? Well, the first one was just, it was very general. So it was basically, um, whose city is this? Archives, gentrification, and legal space in Toronto's Davenport West neighborhood. Also an excellent title. See, like titles, you can have such abundance with your titles. It's great. Okay, should we move on to another piece? All right, so we did context, title. Um, we're gonna do the next few minutes um, 
free writing methodology. Okay, so free writing methodology. You're going to take whatever you just had as your title, your general topic, and you're going to say, in order to investigate this, right, I will need to. And then you're going to be coming back to, you can have your letters that you write over and over again. My method is, my method is, my method is. If you're like, um, so like Leon is writing a kind of fictional um, version of this proposal that probably won't be the actual thesis. So your approach is going to just be, and if anyone's in that stage where you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, think what you would need to do in order to investigate this. So would you need to interview people? Would you need to do um, a discourse analysis? Would you need to do a thorough reading of all of the critical literature on, would you need to, right? So what would you need to do if you were going to do this? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to do this for um, just six minutes. Um, if you feel like you can talk about it, it's like, why are you, you're going to do this, why? Then you can have some sense of like, you can go ahead and start talking about how are you going to process whatever you're looking at, right? So are you going to do a thematic analysis? Are you going to do word clouds? Are you going to do, um, this is always, the methodology part is always really hard for me because when I did philosophy grant applications, I was just like, I am going to read books and say stuff about what I think about the books. Um, so you have to learn to translate any of those things. So if you're doing a thing that's like, I'm going to talk to people and then I'm going to code their responses, that's easier to write about. But everyone needs to have some kind of methodology. Um, so in here, you can be talking about why this is reasonable and possible. You can be talking about if there are any ethical concerns that you need to address in your method. If there's anyone who's at risk who you would be talking to. Um, so again, the main thing is continuous, unstopping writing. Um, so you were not continuously unstopping writing. And so I want you to put a piece of paper in front of your screen so that you cannot see what you're doing. Does anyone else need me to force them to put a paper in front of their screen? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we'll do um, six minutes. Everyone ready? Okay, so my methodology is my methodology is.
Okay, so draw that thought to a close. Um, we're about to lose the Zoom link. Does anyone want to take another break right now or should we um, just keep going, stretch and come back? How are folks doing? I'm a believer in taking breaks every 45 minutes. Zoom makes us take breaks every 40 minutes, so it's a little short. <laughs> Could folks use a little, a little gap? Okay, Andrew and Taryn will be in a little bit. Okay. Hi, I'm probably not gonna be able to come back, but thank oh. you so much. Oh, okay, nice to hear awesome. your voice. Awesome, thanks so much, this is wonderful. Okay. Bye. Bye.